Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the world's best investing podcast. Today, I just finished my IRON deep dive. IRON stands for Iris Energy. And my takeaway from this deep dive is that IRON is basically applying the same playbook that Tesla has applied that has seen the company become a free cash flow machine over the past decade, except IRON is applying that playbook to data centers. As AI scaling laws persist and actually accelerate and new AI scaling laws emerge, as NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang always reminds us quarterly, actually in a quarterly cadence, the demand for compute and power ultimately is rising exponentially. We need much more energy than we currently have. And it's possible that over the coming five to 10 years, AI scales so much that we basically don't have enough energy to continue scaling it. So what did Tesla do? And ultimately, why do I believe that iron is so interesting? Well, Tesla went through quote unquote production hell in between 2017 and 2018, which enabled them to get much more efficient at manufacturing cars. That's what enabled Tesla to bring the Model 3 to life. And that's how Tesla then became the cash producing machine that we now know it to be. Over the past five years, Tesla has been dealing with things like basically people pulling back essentially in the purchase of new cars because the price of money is up. And there's a number of intricacies to the thesis, which you can go and review in my quarterly Tesla updates. However, it remains that these guys built an amazing platform. Once they went through production hell once and they brought the Model 3 to life, they've been able to take that blueprint and instantiate various factories worldwide and essentially pump out cars into the road in a way that's increasingly cheaper and harder to emulate profitably. That's because they're constantly iterating on the platform and therefore they can put out cars cheaper, faster, essentially than anyone else. Now that's bootloading the next platform, which is basically you put more cars on the road than anyone else and they run on this vertically integrated infrastructure. Therefore, they pick up more data than anyone else. Therefore, you create the best physical AI out there in the world. So the thing with Iron is essentially that in the past two to three years, they've increased their capacity for compute measured in exahash by 50x. Basically, a hash is the unit of compute that you have to do to solve a puzzle in the Bitcoin network. And as the network scales, you have to solve more of these puzzles to actually unlock one Bitcoin. And therefore, the more exahash iron can run, the more it can mine. And iron makes money by mining Bitcoins and then selling them in the market straight away. And so they've multiplied their capacity to basically solve problems in the Bitcoin network by 50x. And they've reduced the number of joules per terahash, terahash just being a different measure of the same, basically of how many units of work you have to do by 50% in the past two to three years. To me, this screams process power. The, the reason they are able to radically enhance the scale at which they operate and the energetic efficiency is that they have a blueprint. And so they developed a blueprint in a facility called Canal Flats. And then they took that into their new facilities at the time new, uh, one of them being Childress. I hope I'm pronouncing that well. Maybe it's pronounced Childress. I don't know. But basically, uh, this site is where they now concentrate most of their activity. And the fact that the, the fact that the increased scale and energetic efficiency comes from this blueprint basically suggests that this company is, one, capable of developing such blueprints, two, capable of scaling them. And so you guys know I'm not necessarily a fan of Bitcoin. I am more, much more a fan of productive assets. So I'd much rather own a Palantir or, you know, even a Netflix than Bitcoin <clears throat> and stuff like that. But these guys, what they're doing is they're funding this blueprint for data centers and actual physical instances of new data centers by mining Bitcoin and setting them in the market. And then they are starting to run AI workloads on the infrastructure, which initially was built for Bitcoin. So actually, the standardized design that they use for their data centers contemplates running in these data centers all kinds of workloads. But as I was saying, this is organically funded and grown via, via mining Bitcoin. So I think it's quite interesting that they recently 
just deployed the AI vertical at the start of 2024, and they had 248 NVIDIA H100s. And then as of the last quarter, which is Q3 fiscal year 2025, they had 1,896 H100s and H200s. So what I believe is likely going to happen here, and there's a lot of details in the deep dive, what I believe is more likely than not is that they continue iterating on this blueprint such that over time, they deploy more and more data centers, which I was explaining, get funded by essentially mining Bitcoin and then present the marginal, sorry, the upside at a marginal cost by essentially pointing those facilities at AI workloads. And so it's interesting. It's an asymmetry in that if you don't quite believe in crypto, as is my case, this gives you an exposure to two of the most prominent compute workloads of our time, which is crypto and AI. So say AI fails and crypto works, you get exposure to that and vice versa. And so generally, I talk a lot about the concept of process power. And as I explained in the, in the deep dive, excuse me, which you can find in the link in my YouTube bio, um, it's for free and everything. Um, Essentially, process power is the intangible force behind a company that then makes success more likely. And so how do you define that in a Bayesian uh, context? So in a probabilistic context, this thing is zooming uh, in and out. I don't know why, but anyways. So how I define it is when you have a company achieving a series of impossible feats one after another, such that eventually they produce something that's very interesting, as you know was the case with him, is the is the case now, as is the case with Iron. And then you look at each of these events, and the probability of just achieving one of these events is zero, such that the string of achieving all these things, which would basically be multiplying 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 many times, that would be zero. But then these guys just execute. And what they do is they don't only say, they don't only do what they say they were going to do, they actually do it ahead of schedule. And there's many such examples. So one example of this is the completion of the aforementioned canal flat site, which, <clears throat> excuse me, is based in southern, uh, southeastern British Columbia. So it was scheduled for December 2021, but it was actually completed in September 2021. The site was expected to operate at 700 peta hash, which again is just a measure of, you know, how many hashes units of work you have to do to basically stake compute into the Bitcoin network. But it was actually operating at 850 peta hash in Q3 fiscal year 2022. So many examples of these guys doing that. One thing I really liked, and it was one of the key pieces of data that, that really enabled me, that really make me think these guys have tremendous process power, is the fact that even though they've been growing scale tremendously. So they just, I believe they recently just announced that they hit 50 exa hash yesterday. And if you look at the quarterly earnings report, the curve in terms of how many exa hash they have at any point in time has grown so rapidly. But it's interesting that in Q1 fiscal year 2025, Iron Management said, hey, I think we're going to see operating leverage gains going forward into the year. And then in Q3 fiscal year 2025, which is the last earnings report, Iron's other costs, which uh, I believe are basically the costs required to run the data centers, et cetera, have gone from 23.76% to 17.08% of revenue year over year. So you see, you see scale growing very quickly, energetic efficiency growing very quickly, and then the overhead costs uh, as a percentage of revenue declining very fast. And so that just screams... A, a management team and an organization more broadly that's capable of focusing on the curves that you actually need to compound in order to create value and do so durably in the face of competition in the market. So that's what Tesla has done over the past decade. And that's what you see these guys doing, obviously, at much earlier stages. It's This is not a Tesla yet. Actually, the cash flows are remarkably negative. I talk about how the SEC required Iron to report the cash flows from the sale of Bitcoin as cash from investing activities and not cash from operations, even though that is primarily how they make money. And so that is one distinction to have in mind. But essentially, you have, on the one hand, revenue that's growing exponentially, and then you have cash flows that are negative. The balance sheet is slightly net positive, so they have a little bit more cash than debt, 
which makes the thesis a little bit more sustainable. But cash from operations and cash from investing are highly negative, and so they are burning cash. They have demonstrated an ability to raise cash when required, but obviously there's if if you don't start producing cash from operations, cash in general, that's going to end up in shareholder dilution. But anyways, the rate at which they are increasing their overall power uh, power capacity is tremendous. Right now, I believe they are increasing their capacity by 50 megawatts per month. And in aggregate, at this point in time, what they have is something like 2.93 gigawatts of connected, of, of contracted uh, connection to the grid. And so... What I what's what what I think is going to happen in the short term is that as AI continues scaling, you actually have this power shortage, and these guys really have the infrastructure to deliver. So I think that this company continues to gain gain traction because, look, I mean, one thing that I really liked is that they were, um, I, I believe it was a few years ago, they had they were doing something like thirty joules per uh, per terahash, and then they were able to buy. They were able to make this single purchase decision. So they bought uh, ASICs from a company called Bitmain and the jewels per terahash declined drastically. It's another qualitative insight, but again, this company is just full of examples of them taking decisions that then decisively produce better numbers where it really matters. And another thing that's interesting is that when they started the Canal Flat site, which, as I was saying, is based in um, southeastern British Columbia, they were doing an average of $0.05 per kilowatt hour. And now at Childress or Childress, I hope I'm pronouncing that well, they are doing $0.03 per kilowatt hour. Obviously, this is aided by the fact that in Texas, you have plentiful renewable energy, which is cheaper. By the way, that's, that's a great thing really for everyone. But it shows you that these guys can not only optimize at the at you know at the site level in terms of just deploying more capacity and then using whatever energy they have better, they are able to use the land component to decrease the overall cost of energy. And this ability to iterate vertically along the stack is again very reminiscent of Tesla. As I was saying, this company is nothing like Tesla today. Tesla is 10, 15 years ahead of this company. But what this reminds me of at a much earlier stage is ASTS. You basically have this thing, which is an engineering feat and is an exhibition of notable organizational properties. And you have this combination of having to deal with politics, geography, technology, regulations, which I believe would be a subset of politics, etc. So ASTS they have to uh, they have to do this impossible engineering feat in space and then they have to close deals with the MNOs with the network providers then they have to abide by all the regulations which involves dealing with a bunch of politicians and and basically regulators etc and so these guys are doing the same because in order to beat them you have to get really good at buying land you have to get really good at dealing with contracting power from the grid which is hard You have to get very good at optimizing everything that happens in the sites. So essentially, you have to get very good or or produce a standardized design of sites, which is better than irons, and then scale. Because this this business has economies of scale, as is the case with Tesla. So your fifth factory is going to be much more efficient than your first one. And as you get bigger, you have more capital to reinvest, which basically enables you to get more efficient. So so the Tesla analogy comes really down to they have a blueprint for facilities, which they are doing, they are using very well. And that's why they've scaled the number of exahash that they run. That's why they are getting more efficient in terms of joules per terahash. And that's why the average cost of energy is going down as they make further moves, because they can select the adequate land and contract the power. And then, you know, it's the way I see this company now, as I was saying, it's like ASTS. It's an early stage company with negative cash flows, which to me would put it more in the kind of VC shortlist um, in that, you know, when I invested in Spotify and Palantir heavily, these were highly asymmetric scenarios because you had negative, uh, sorry, positive cash flows. And yet the market was treating these businesses as if they were terrible. Damn, this camera is really annoying, but it probably keeps you guys engaged. And so this to me is a VC play. 
Uh, if you want to read the full deep dive, you can go and do so via the link in my YouTube bio. I think you guys are going to love it. Lots of quotes from management, etc. But going forward, the thesis rests on two ideas, which is one, Iron's ability to deploy more gigawatts. I told you guys they now have 2.93 gigawatts, which I think is a big chunk of the energy shortage that is expected to happen at some point in the coming years with AI scaling. And then Iron's ability to do so while increasing operating leverage, primarily by the aforementioned standardized design, which by the way, Lindsay Ward, who was the president of Iron some years ago, explained, and I talk about this in the deep dive, how the key to success is the way in which they manage air in the sites. And so one thing they have is these fans, which basically go up and down in terms of activity according to the temperature, which you would think is basic, but obviously it goes in, they go into a lot of detail when they talk about this. And then they do this thing where they just re-inject hot air in some part of the site and it works really well. Whatever it is, these guys are doing very well because allegedly this is the only profitable Bitcoin miner, a miner in the industry. So I believe that gives you an idea of, of really how this company is positioned to do going forward. All right, guys. So thank you very much for joining me today. As always, if you enjoyed this Iron Deep Dive, could you please share this with someone else? These deep dives are for free. And so the only way this grows is with your help. So thank you very much in advance. Take care and see you next time.